That is where Janice Levinson is coming from. She was a victim of this corrupt family court system. After divorcing her wealthy and abusive ex-husband, I took this right off your website, so I'm, I assumed it was all right, public knowledge. She had full and legal custody, physical custody of all three of her children. By the time her youngest aged out of the system, due to family court corruption, she lost custody of her children. She was never accused of any wrongdoing. She was a stay-at-home mom. Now, I just talked to you about the custody of these children is being granted more and more to abusers. It is happening. It is happening more and more. I heard a lawyer, I heard an attorney tell a man one time, I was standing right there, if you sue for custody, you'll probably get them. Because that's just the way it's happening these days. So along with Lundy Bancroft, I'll let you, if you want to tell them who Lundy Bancroft is, she co-founded the Protective Mothers Alliance International, working toward bringing about dramatic reform in family court for protective mothers and their children. We do have some protective fathers, but mostly it is protective mothers, isn't it, Janice? So Janice, I'm just going to let you tell about what you do. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I just first want to say I'm thrilled to be here today, and I want to thank Jocelyn for inviting me. And although I don't think she really knows it, I will t say that I'm probably one of her biggest fans. <laughs> I just adore her. I think she's awesome, and I've read her books, and, you know, God has really touched her in a mighty way. So I just, I'm very supportive of everything she does. Um, I am the executive director, hands-on director, co-founder of an organization um, called Protective Mothers Alliance International. Um, I co-founded it with Lundy Bancroft. Lundy Bancroft is an author and he's written books on abuse and one of his most famous books is Why Does He Do That? Inside the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men. And when I first read that book I was in a relationship with my now ex-husband, who was emotionally abusive, verbally abusive, mentally abusive, and extremely controlling. He was very wealthy, and um, I had three children by him, and I was in that situation. And as I was reading Lundy's book, <clears throat> I uh, felt that Lundy was living in the house with me, because every single thing in that book was exactly what I was going through, what I was feeling, words that were coming right out, straight out of my ex-husband's mouth, the way he behaved to me and everything. And since then, as I pass this book along to other women that are in similar situations, I get the same response. Is this man living in my house? So Lundy's background is he started the first batterer intervention program in the country. In Massachusetts, where he is based, with the intention of trying to get these batterers to change and later on down the road realizing it's very rare unfortunately that you can get them to change because they have a vested interest in battering you and controlling you because they get what they want out of it and so it's, it's a narcissistic slash ego type of a situation so I divorced my ex-husband and things were great in the beginning. Um, I had primary physical custody of all three of my wonderful children for about three years. And then he got serious with this woman that he was seeing. And as soon as she came on board, that's when everything changed. And this is pretty typical for most moms. Usually when they're separated, and they're divorced, if the dad just wants to go off and date, he doesn't want the responsibilities of taking the children, taking care of the children, but when another woman comes into his life, then he understands that, well, I can get this woman to do the work of taking care of the children, and I can not have to pay my ex-wife child support. Wow, isn't that an interesting concept. So usually I find from all the phone calls that I get, and we get, I've spoken to countless women in the year that I've directed this organization, the pattern is similar to this. It usually happens when another woman comes um, into the man's life. And so they teamed up and they systematically 
continue to take me to court repeatedly over minor, crazy little false allegations. And they were minor things. They were completely false also. But you have to defend yourself. You know, when you're subpoenaed to court, you have to go. And the intention is, it's a win-win for the men. For my ex-husband, it was a win-win. He was either going to drain my finances, because every time you go to court, you have to pay your attorney, and they're, we all know attorneys are very expensive. And then he would be able to take the children based on the fact that I'm penniless and homeless or whatever he was trying to make me be, and he can now have custody of my children, or he was going to win in family court. So it was a win-win in his part, and he stuck me in a corner and put me in a catch-22. Um, so he continued to take me to court. I was in family court for over 11 years, fighting for my children. Finally, when my children were preteens, he was able to dealt the final blow <clears throat> and got full physical custody of all of my children, all three of my children. Lundy Bancroft called me up, and now I've known him before this through the Battered Mother's Custody Conference. I spoke to him occasionally, but we did not have any type of relationship that was a working relationship. He called me up and asked me if I wanted to be the director of what was then Protect a Mother's Alliance for Justice. And we, I said, yeah. And we changed the name to Protective Mother's Alliance. And it has become an international organization. And since then, we've been in existence for about a year. And since then, we have approximately 60 to 65 state chapter leaders internationally. We've grown that quickly. I get flooded with phone calls every single day. And as Jocelyn explained, the experience that she shared with you about being on the phone with a desperate mom who is in the process of losing her children to a man who either is emotionally abusive, physically abusive, or sexually abusing the children is something that I live every day. I speak to these women on the phone every day. I'm on the phone, and she's right, on an average of two hours with each mom. I just let them pour their heart out. They ask for my help, and I try to guide them to some good resources that can possibly help them. The bad news is that this is the way family court is throughout the world, which is why we've grown so quickly. And all of us that are in the, this movement, um, we call it America's dirty little secret. Most people don't realize this. Your average person would not know this is going on. I would still talk to the average person on the street, and if you ask them, what do you think happens during a divorce, who gets the children, you'll hear the mother immediately. And they would be so shocked if I was to tell them, no, you're wrong, it's really the father. And everyone still to this day feels that unless the mother is a drug addict, an alcoholic, or beats the children, that she gets custody of the children. And that is just simply not true. Just from the calls that I'm getting, and as we go through the years, I see that more and more men are getting custody of the children. And it doesn't seem to matter to the family court whether the man's abusive or not. If he's a man, he's going to get custody of the children. So we have this organization that is international, and we have 60 to 65 state chapter leaders, and we have um, two leaders from Canada. We have a woman from New Zealand. We have a woman in Italy. We have a woman in the UK, and we have a leader in the Netherlands. And so, frighteningly, this is not just happening in the United States. When it was happening to me, I thought it was just happening in California. And I'm saying, well, California's very strange. I've got to move out of here. <laughs> and I was happy to move. And then when I go to the Batter Mother's Custody Conference, I realize it's happening all over the country. I was shocked. And as I do this work as a director of Protect a Mother's Alliance, I realize this is an international problem. It's not just a national problem. And it's happening all over the world. We are continuing to gather up the protective mothers and the media is ignoring us. They ignore pretty much singular and small group of advocates. But when Protective Mothers has 100, 500, 1,000 women in solidarity saying the same thing, 
with the same voice, they no longer can ignore us and we will make change. We will walk into hell of family court where the devil reigns and take it back and give it back to God written